Good morning to everyone and welcome to this second session of the Nurturing Communities Conference for this year. This is the second session talking about challenges and opportunities in this pandemic. And my name is Coretta Thompson. I'm a member of the Bruderhof and I live at the Fox Hill community and I'll be facilitating today. And we thank Debbie in advance for um, running the technology. Um, and it's good to see so many people again. Some of you I know, many I don't know. Um, and if anyone wasn't able to make it last time and has been able to make it this time, special welcome to you. And we'll be doing some recapitulating before we move on. So um, I'm sure we'll all be in the loop. Um, uh, and just while we're coming in, um, I'm going to read down the list that Nancy provided of all the communities that are represented, at least on the sign-up sheet. And as I read your community's name, you can just give a wave, and then we can be a bit more introduced to each other. Um, so here goes. Jubilee Partners, Hope Fellowship, Riva Place, American Bible Society, Refuge of Christ, Japuza, Lilies and Sparrows, Koinonia Farm, Engelward Christian Church, <laughs> Church by the Bay, Fresno Intentional Community, Bloomington Christian Radical Community, I guess. Iglesia de Cristo El Salvador, Oklahoma Christian University, Fresno Lowell Community, Church of the Sojourners, Eden Community, Poplar Place, and the Bruderhof. So um, this morning, morning, we will be hearing from Brother David Jansen, and then we'll be spending 45 minutes together in smaller groups discussing an important question. Um, so we are definitely going to need God's guidance for today, and we'll begin with a prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful day and that we can get together with so many brothers and sisters. And today we ask for your guidance on our meeting, for your spirit to be present among us. We pray for so many all over the world who need your help today, for everyone who's sick, who's struggling with this pandemic. And we especially pray for California, that the winds die down and the fires can be put out. And we know that you have all the answers and look to your kingdom which is coming soon in jesus name we pray amen amen so um joe and nancy asked me to just say a few words about myself since i'm new to the group um i was actually at the nurturing communities conference in platclo um, a few years ago I then had a bit of a career change, you might say, and I'd been working for Plow Publishing, um, doing the Spanish publications for some years, and I was, had the chance to go study in South America for the last three years, studying humanities in Spanish, and that was a huge opportunity because the world current events and world history sure does look different if you're looking in from the global margins. And again, was a real privilege. And there is a lot of interesting community down there, by the way. Um, I did meet Brother Kent Smith and Joe and Nancy Gatlin down there for <laughs> visiting communities. And then I finished, amazingly, March 5th. And arrived up to New York State on March 13th, the day that the national health emergency was declared and the first cases were declared in Uruguay. 
And after a month of shutdown, because New York State was pretty shut down from in March and April, um, a neighboring nursing home asked the Bruderhof for help because they were losing a lot of people through the coronavirus. So for six weeks from mid-April to late May, I'm an LPN and I went with two other sisters who are nurses and we worked in this nursing home where we certainly saw the, well, many sides firsthand. We saw firsthand how the effects of not taking measures against the coronavirus. Um, it was the nursing home with the third highest death rate in the state. And we also saw firsthand the effects of the measures themselves because the residents who had been in their rooms for a couple months were losing ground just from that. And I also saw the amazing resilience and courage of my coworkers. Many of them were living away from their families for weeks at a time so that they could protect their families at home and also serve the people in the nursing home as nurses and aides and housekeeping staff. So I've been back at Fox Hill now, Fox Hill Bruderhof for the last two months, working in Plough, as I said. And oh, by the way, the Bruderhof did also send out other teams. We weren't the only ones in the first wave and we continue to support as we can um, in this moment of pandemic. So now briefly before we get to David's video, um, I'm gonna do a short recap, which David will also be doing part of in this video. For those who weren't here last time. Um, last time we heard from Bren Dubay, Koinonia, Debbie Baumgartner of Jacuza, Ruth Boardman of Hope Fellowship, and Joe Bowling of Englewood about how their communities were dealing with the pandemic. And personally, I was very encouraged because it sounded so familiar. And one of the effects of this pandemic is that even though in our heads we know that everyone's in it together, um, one can feel like, am I the only one dealing with this? Feel bad or feel overwhelmed or what have you. And we really have been facing the same things, which in a way are the, the issues that individual families have also been facing. Um, themes like being closed for the first time ever. Um, the people who are caregivers feeling overwhelmed and those who aren't feeling lonely. Financial issues, the whole racial issues and, and the issue of justice. Um, and we also heard of opportunities, um, how we care more for each other how new gifts are coming to the fore and creativity and how the community building process is being strengthened and maybe sped up in some cases of new communities or in my case, a large community that suddenly became many smaller community groups somehow working together. Um, and how this pandemic is also a great revealer. Joe Bowling um, brought that up, how we can also thank God that the truth is being shown that there are these societal problems and now it's time to deal with them. So without further ado, we'll turn to what David Jansen has to share with us and I'm gonna do a screen share here. Um, so here it goes. Dear sisters and brothers in the Nurturing Communities family, I'm David Jansen from Reba Place Fellowship in case you've not figured that out. Here I sit, as you can imagine, <clears throat> looking at a computer in my lap, trying to imagine you wherever you are. It pains and grieves me that we are not bodily together in the same space. However, I don't wanna get melodramatic about our physical separation. I realize that most of the time we're not physically with each other anyway, but we are together in the spirit, in the imagination that remembers and anticipates, 
that links us in prayer and love at any time, even if we're only uh, together sometimes. In my imagination, I'm remembering times with you in the flesh uh, at nurturing community network gatherings over recent years in places like Reba's Emanuel Lodge beside Camp Lake in southern Wisconsin, um, up the mountain at Platt Clove Bruderhof, at Jesus People in Gritty Chicago, eating pizza at a windy picnic table uh, behind the Englewood Christian Church in uh, Indianapolis, and sitting around campfires at New Meadow Run, and sharing our wacky lacks of talent to tremendous applause at all these places. How my heart longs to be with you like that again, sharing the love of Jesus alive among us. Now, when I say these words, I realize they sound a lot like what the Apostle Paul writes in his letters to the circles of believers where he spent weeks, months, and even years sometimes building up the church of our crucified and risen Messiah. Paul's longing to be with them and his ache at separation has been communicated in letters that have endured and come down to us. Now we are included in these circles of the spirit, sustained by the gift of imagination and by increasingly sophisticated means of communication. Ironically, it's also the sophistication of modernity that has created the conditions to spread a plague around the world so quickly. It's also the stubbornness of human nature that refuses to take the precautions that could tame this plague and allow a cautious reopening of fellowship, hospitality, common work, and a fuller life together. My task in this talk is to review a few of the, of the uh, more noteworthy ways people are facing the challenge and finding opportunities in this season of pandemic. Um, a pandemic that, in the words of Joe Bowling, has greatly discombobulated our normal community life. That word discombobulated sort of reminds me of a juggler who's where all the balls have fallen to the ground. I think it was Debbie Baumgartner who observed that our challenges are at the same time our opportunities. We cannot travel freely, so we stay home and have more time for intimacy with a few people in our households and more time for prayer and contemplation and reading. At the same time, these opportunities don't fall on everybody equally. A lot of uh, parents of younger children, of school-age children, have sort of double duty of, of schooling their kids and doing as much of their work as they can. We are in communities where we have to share in order to make the burdens somewhat equal. At Koinonia Partners, uh, they've had to shut down their ministry of hospitality for the first time in their history, but they're they're reflecting as never before on how to care for one another. So the opportunities and challenges are very close together. We're learning how to say, I love you over Zoom. And as a few of us get good at this technology, we actually feel like we're in each other's presence and we can see each other's eyes and light up in each other's company. Um, <clears throat> We can feel a little bit like what it must have been like for Paul's uh, messengers to be reading these letters to the church that is gathered and feel connected in Jesus. Often we have to get to extreme situations in order to know the truth of our human condition. So this coronavirus is a, a bother for some, a huge inconvenience for others, and a lot matter of life and death for, for, for others still. That extreme condition sort of has come before me 
in the form of a grave and hilarious reflection by a Mennonite Central Committee worker, Lucky Samuel Sanguera, Manguera, on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic in Kenya. He shares his reflections and Christian faith in the form of a letter. Dear coronavirus, welcome to Kenya. A few things you should know. Here, we don't die of flu. Don't be surprised if you fail to succeed. Everything fails in Kenya. We're more likely to die of cholera attack than be killed by you. For us, every day is a running escape from death. Death is part of our lives. The shadow that leans over us from the time the umbilical cord is cut and buried behind the house. Death can befall us at any time and we are not scared. If it comes, it comes. Why worry over what we cannot control? Everything dies, right? Even you, Corona, will die. In a situation where the writer confesses that his people have almost no control over the certainty of death, still he can choose the faith to courageously face death, face death daily with a joy the world cannot give. In a time like this, as in all times, I see three kinds of wisdom emerging. There's the practical wisdom of best practices, like Dr. Fauci repeats for us daily on the news. Wear masks, practice social distancing, avoid indoor crowds, meet outside if necessary, wash hands often, etc. Each of our communities have adapted these measures to fit our present and changing circumstances. Then there is conventional wisdom, second kind of wisdom, <clears throat> the wisdom of the world, which comes in several varieties. For some, it is to scoff at the virus as if it only kills other people or those who would die anyway. Some claim they are willing to die for the economy as if it has a holy and transcendent value. Or at the other extreme, some people live in panic, taking every imaginable precaution so as to squeeze out the last joy of life itself. This is the wisdom of the world that lives as if there is no God and, or, and other people do not matter. The world we live in is suffering not just from the coronavirus, but from the even deadlier virus of lies, of demagogic uh, speakers where <clears throat> whom people believe because the message matches up with their fears. Where shall we stand in order to see the wisdom of the world clearly for what it is? The work of the confuser who seeks to have us fight and destroy one another, who wants us to forget our basic human solidarity. Thank God there is a third kind of wisdom, the wisdom of Jesus, the wisdom of the cross, which teaches us to live every day in practical sharing, longing and working for the kingdom of God, come what may. We're touching here on a familiar refrain that is the same across all times and throughout scripture. In times of pandemic and in times when our cussed human nature creates other crises of war and injustice, our world never gets to return to a peaceful normal anyway. The Bible reminds us of a constant theme. Bad things happen. God takes us through them in anguish and suffering and uses these bad times for good. We interpret our times through the experience of Joseph in the Old Testament, through Jesus in the New Testament, and through the stories of the saints who endured suffering to bring heaven to earth in ways that bless us all. My African-American co-worker in uh, affordable housing, Keith Banks, is married to Rosemary Banks, a preacher who often says, with the authority of a suffering people, tough times don't last, but tough people do. That raises a question we want to ponder together 
when we get into smaller working groups. In the time of pandemic crisis, what is God doing to us and our communities that is supposed to last? Last week, Bren Dubay shared with us the conviction that has risen to the top of conversations at Koinonia, and that, and that is, we do not want to return to the old normal. I've heard others of you repeat that refrain, but this conviction needs to be unpacked with specific detail. The old normal includes racism, ecological devastation, violence, a false narrative about who we are and why we are here. What is it about the old normal in our communities that should be left behind? In a few minutes, we'll gather in small breakout groups to listen to each other and to the spirit in order to compose a brief prophetic message that we'll want to take back to our communities. Here's a two-part question we encourage you to work with. Our world, our communities, and we as individuals have been shaken and changed by this season of pandemic. And so we ask, what is God doing to us that is supposed to last? And what is the old normal that is supposed to pass away? In conclusion, and by the technology that both stands between us and that mysteriously links us up, I want you to know that I love you with the love of Jesus and there's nothing you can do about it. And now I pass on the challenge and the opportunity of the moment back to Coretta Thompson, your host for this morning. So thank you, David. Thank you for your words and for that question. So now we're going to be going into the breakout groups. Debbie's been working on getting them assigned. First, I'm going to screen share the instructions here and explain what we will be doing. We'll have 45 minutes for this discussion which is good because there's a lot of ground to cover and it's quite a question that David has put to us. And it's good to spend some time introducing ourselves, um, but please keep that to about 10 minutes so that we can move on because the hope is that from these discussions, we can come up with some practical suggestions or inspirations, et cetera, that we can bring back to our communities and share with the other communities as well. And after these 10 minutes, we also ask that the group appoint a note taker to take notes that can later be posted into the chat, as you can see on the screen share. And these instructions will also be broadcast to the groups by Debbie once we are in the groups. Um, but feel free to jot down this question as well. What is God doing to us that is supposed to last? And what of the old normal is supposed to pass away? One more note is that we reiterate, please be mindful of everyone in the group and give time for everyone to participate in the discussion. And this last time we did uh, groups of four screens, this time we're gonna aim for groups of five screens, although maybe the math won't quite work out with the number of participants. So without further ado, Debbie, please push us out to the breakout groups. And, and she'll be reminding us after 10 minutes and also giving us a five minute reminder so we can wrap up our conversations. Hey, everybody. It's really quiet. <laughs> so 
So welcome back everyone. Looks like people are still coming in here. So I hope that everyone else had a good session as we did. It was definitely, I appreciated the conversation. And at this time, the secretary from each group can post um, some bullet points of what was discussed into the group chat. And these will be collected later and circulated to all the attendees so that we can all bring these ideas and reflections back to our communities and also have them for our own personal growth and seeking. And while everyone's doing that, um, I have a few housekeeping items here. Um, this is just obviously the beginning of a conversation. This, it's an endless topic and in a way it's best done in our small groups, although I'm very grateful for this space so that we can learn from each other. Um, it's, it's always great to share. And there will be a resource page going out with further readings in the next few days. I'm sure we all read the first three articles that were sent out, and this is a list of, um, I don't know, a dozen more, um, for people who are interested to cross-pollinate um, in this search for what God is saying to us and trying to teach us through this pandemic. Um, another point is that nurturing communities will make everyone's email addresses available to the participants of this workshop. And if you would not like your email address shared, please get, get to nurturing communities by replying to the Zoom link email today. Because it, we've met a lot of great brothers and sisters and it would be good to continue the conversation together via email. And another little uh, reminder, on October 10th will be the next workshop. That's not the next Saturday, but the following one. And if you haven't registered for that yet, please do so as soon as you sign off because the registration closes today at midnight, I assume. So it would be great to see everyone back for the next workshop on um, the challenge of racism and what we can do about it. So now I am going to try to get this chat up here. Here we go. And there were a lot of things discussed in my group, what we highlighted, some ideas um, were the idea that the work is God's and it's love that counts. And what we want to let go of is being too busy to spend time with each other and too busy to build community with each other. We also wanted to let go of taking things for granted. That was a big one. Um, and trust God that he will take care of us as we let go of things, the old normal, things that the old normal that we are grieving for. Here in the chat, I see um, idea of letting go of consumerism, how unbalanced we are, apathy to the problems of others. From another group, ideas to last, um, relationships, and a focus shift from our own health to the health of our brothers and sisters. That's very important. Claim our unity, prayer together, basic human solidarity. We are in this life together. We were reflecting how right at the beginning of the pandemic, we felt that as a globe. And I think this came up last time too, and how that moment passed. And 
That was actually a very special moment of God. Let it pass away, another point. Conspiracy theories and being suspicious of others' motives. Panic. Participation in polarization. Primacy of Sunday mornings or Sunday-only connections. I really like that one. Frantic pace of life that doesn't have space in it for reflection or contemplation, especially together. Here's another succinct one. What to change? Think of church more as family rather than as institution. That's important for nurturing communities. More walking and port sharing. Folks who are at home and able to connect. Um, that was brought up in our group too, how um, before everyone was out traveling and now front porches are being used again instead of just the back door um, because it's the only way you can meet. When we are not so full of ourselves, we can love God and our neighbors more. Simplification of life allows focus on what's most important. But we fear we'll start to ignore what we're learning now. And that's why we're having this conversation, because we're human beings and <laughs> we can learn something and forget it tomorrow, unfortunately. But we have to keep praying that it not happen and spurring each other on as brothers and sisters within our community and also between communities. Here's from another group. Foster concrete action of communities together day by day, building stronger relationships around projects and celebrations. That's great. Um, on the Bruderhof, uh, we do a lot of good food together. Of course, it's not been possible to get together and share good food, not even the famous cookies. Um, from nurturing communities conferences in the past. So the times that we have been able to do stuff as a larger community, socially distanced, outdoors, food has not been involved. But that's great because celebration is about being together, um, not about exactly how it plays out really. Here some more are coming in. Pass away, taking things for granted in the fast pace. Keep intentionality, caring, focus on basic spiritual disciplines, prayer, caring for each other, studying scripture, sense of living in a time of hardship, presence with each other, focus on gardening and sustainability, formalize prayer times and music. And here's the last one that just came in. Um, renewed recognition that Jesus is the leader of our families, communities, that as Jesus dwells among us, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to be a neo family together. And that's beautiful. And I'm sure everyone's felt now in a special way that we need God. Um, we need God in this crisis of health with. Um, with all the unrest, the violence, and that's a good thing to feel. Here's one more good one <laughs> that just came in from Barbara Bridgewater. I think we often consider longing or alone or missing something as negative. There is something very positive about recognizing these things within ourselves. The reiterates the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, and that's when God can use us. So um, just briefly before I pass it over to Joe Gatlin, who has a message for us, and then Brother Kent Smith, who will end our session with a prayer, I have a small passage I wanted to share with everyone to encourage everyone and this sure encouraged me going along with what we've been talking about in today's meeting it's the passage from john 15 16 
You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. And as we've been talking about, what is the fruit that God wants us to bear right now in our particular soil and environment? We didn't choose to be caught in the biggest global pandemic in 100 years, but here we are. And in fact, there are many others in the same storm, but not in the same boat as us that, objectively speaking, are a lot worse off than us. And they didn't choose it either. Um, we all have our unique challenges, though, and everyone has their burdens, no matter where they are at, and you can't really compare burdens objectively. But God wants something of each one of us so that we can further his kingdom on this earth and do his work. And the second part of that um, quotation is what more can we ask of God in Jesus' name, as he promises that he will give to us so that we can serve him better. And as we pray, we should also be attentive to how God is working and answering prayers all over the world, as well as in our lives. So now I'm going to pass it over to Joe Gatlin. Yeah, just, just a brief announcement. Uh, maybe most people are aware of this, but um, <clears throat> I'll mention it anyway. Nancy and I, along with Tim uh, from the Bruderhof, who's on the call with us this morning, uh, and is currently serving at uh, Jubilee, and Debbie, who's also on the call from uh, Jesus People, and uh, Toby, who's also from the Bruderhof, serve as a uh, volunteer leadership sort of coordinating team for nurturing communities and uh, you know, I know I know we know everybody personally who's on this call but just want to say again we're glad to spend time at this time it's time on zoom or phone calls uh, glad to spend time with people that are forming communities or in communities or thinking about getting on communities we're, we're always very happy to do that. It's inspiring for us. And uh, to, so we're glad to help make connections with other communities, which we've been doing a lot recently. We hear somebody's sort of working through an issue with uh, maybe children in their household in a ministering community and have been able to set up time with some other folks that are done that sort of thing for years. So glad to, to do all that. So if there's, if there's needs out there or any way we can help uh, let us know. We look forward again at some point to um, maybe getting out on the road and visiting some different communities too. But um, right now we're we're learning, uh, continuing to learn how to use Zoom and and get better at it all the time. So, so that's it. So thanks. Back to you, Coretta. Is that right? Yeah. Thank you, Joe. And I'll hand it over to Kent now. For the closing prayer and if you have some thoughts to share with us too that would be great well this has been rich um thank you to all of us who have uh, contributed to the conversation both this uh this week and last week um as we're wrapping up here i wanted to invite us to to attend to the words of jesus as a part of our prayer um to remember his invitation to us uh, to move from places of weariness and distraction into the place of uh, purposeful, uh, joyful work and rest in him. These are his words to us from Matthew chapter 11 in uh, Eugene Peterson's translation. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me. 
and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Let's pray. Lord, we're so grateful that we serve a living Lord who above and beyond and around all things is a God of love who tenderly looks at each of us in the communities that we represent here today and invites us into the yoke that fits and the burden that's light. Thank you, Lord, for calling us from distraction and from selfishness and from superficial preoccupations in this season to a deeper walk with you. Thank you, Lord, for your invitation to each of us and to our communities to join you in the unforced rhythms of grace. We know, Lord, that before and beyond all the history that we understand, you have been at work for good, and you are at work for good now. And your invitation to each one of us is to join you in that life of love and the work that flows from love, that brings goodness. Help us, Lord, to be an embodiment of the answer to your prayer, that your kingdom might come and your will might be done on earth in our time as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for each person who's here, for the whole ecosystem of your grace that is represented by the individual gifts on this call and for the network of communities who each one bears wonderful, beautiful dimensions of your life and your love for the place where you've called them. Keep calling us, Lord, further and deeper into your life of love and make us agents of that love uh, for your glory. Thank you for our time together today and all who have contributed to it. We pray this in Jesus' great name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Kent. All. And thanks to everybody who's been here. And this is the mm -hmm. end of the gathering. Um, similar to last time, um, I have another song from the Swinger family here in Fox Hill because we can't serve you cookies and sing to you in person. And I'll screen share that and you can just leave as you want, as you see fit. So thanks again and till next time. So Christ. Adios. Adios.
So I hope you enjoyed that and we'll say goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks, Coretta.